Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here with another detailed update on Hurricane Aaron for Wednesday, August the 20th, 2025. As always, my thoughts in this video are mine alone and making any decisions regarding Aaron, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather officials for the latest information for where you are. Also, if you haven't been here before and you do find these tropical weather updates on Aaron very helpful, detailed, informative, and life-saving, Please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that bell notification icon to get all my daily tropical weather updates, including live stream hurricane coverage if a hurricane or tropical storm were to make landfall in 24 to 36 hours. Hit that like button and share this video with your family and friends on social media. Now, if you haven't been here before and you do find these updates on Hurricane Aaron very helpful, detailed, informative, and life-saving, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that bell notification icon to get all my daily tropical weather updates, including live streaming coverage on any landfalling hurricane or tropical storm in the next 24 to 36 hours, as well as hit the like button and share this video with your family and friends on social media. Now, taking a look at Hurricane Aaron this afternoon on the satellite imagery, and as we can see here, there does appear to be some concentric eye walls that are forming around the primary eye wall of Aaron here. You can see where the eye actually is, and we have a second band of intense convection that is wrapping around the inner eye wall, probably suggesting that we may have another eye wall replacement cycle to begin here in the next 12 to 24 hours as this hurricane slowly gains intensity as it moves generally off towards the north and the north northeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. And what we also see here is there is not much in the way of vertical wind shear at all. This is a very symmetrical, powerful hurricane by all means. And anybody here living along the Carolina coast needs to take this into consideration as tropical storm force winds are expected in the next 12 to 24 hours. Now, fortunately, we did have a Air Force Hurricane Hunter aircraft that did fly through Aaron from this morning, and they did find that the pressure was at 948 to start their mission and then has since dropped to about 943 millibars while the system is headed due north right now at about zero degrees north in bearing. And this continues to be the case where the center is probably more than likely right here. So this system is continuing to move due north almost or slightly east of due north at this time with an estimated pressure at around 941 millibars. But also keep in mind that despite the pressure fall, this has not led to any wind increases within the eye wall of Aaron since most of the strongest winds here are in the secondary eye wall uh, that is trying to form here and they did find winds that were close to category four intensity with winds maxing out at around 120 to 125 miles an hour so this remains an exceptionally very dangerous hurricane by all means and anybody in the carolina coast needs to take this into serious consideration as life-threatening rip currents storm surge Coastal flooding are all expected, along with tropical storm force winds. Now we can see that concentric eye wall here on the microwave pass from Aaron, and we can see there is your inner eye, that donut of intense convection, surrounded by another band that is trying to consolidate here. So what we do have is concentric eye walls, the primary eye wall being in the middle there, with the secondary eye wall beginning to form, and this typically leads to some weakening and it allows the continuation of an expanding wind field. So as Aaron glides closely here to the North Carolina coast, like the Outer Banks, we are expecting some very strong tropical storm force winds. So now let's take a look at all of our reliable hurricane models here in today's video. And we're gonna start first looking at the Haves A model, and we can see where tropical storm force winds are clearly making their way on shore here of the outer banks of North Carolina. So if you live out here, if you were told to evacuate, please heed those evacuation warnings because we are looking at winds between about 40 to 50 miles an hour now. Anything here in the darkest red and gray color indicates sustained winds of about 48 to 50 miles an hour, which is getting onshore here of the outer banks of North Carolina, with the strongest wind still being to the east of the center and closer to the center here, where we have sustained winds close to 100 miles an hour. Looking at the Haves B model, we can see just a 
touch, just a touch to the east here, leaving the strongest winds here offshore. But not to mention here, the Outer Banks still getting tropical storm force winds, but on the order of about 35 to 45 miles an hour, opposed to 45 to 50 miles an hour on the Havze. But still also showing a powerful hurricane here with winds of about 90 miles an hour. On the H Wharf model, showing a slightly stronger system with, again, winds of around 40 to 50 miles an hour in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Extremely rough surf. We're talking dangerous, perhaps deadly rip currents out, out of this because the surf is going to be extremely high. It is on the increase very quickly already. And you can see the maximum winds here closer to the center around 100 to 110 miles an hour. And the H-Mon showing us something similar. Again, winds along the coast here of the Outer Banks between about 40 to 50 miles an hour with the inner core structure here holding together, actually simulating this a little aggressively given we have concentric eye walls showing winds here of around 110 miles per hour. So all of our reliable hurricane models do not explicitly show this becoming a major hurricane. And therefore, we are going to keep this under major hurricane intensity with my maximum winds that I do expect to reach about 110 miles per hour, while the NHC does show a 120 mile an hour hurricane, which is still a slim possibility. But based on all of the reliable model guidance that I got today, uh, we are not expecting this to become a major hurricane with winds that peak between about 110 miles per hour or so. So looking at the key messages here on Hurricane Aaron, and this is very, very important, and I want you all to really listen closely with what I'm about to read here. Aaron is expected to produce life-threatening surf and rip currents along the beaches of the Bahamas, much of the east coast of the United States, Bermuda, and the Atlantic Canada during the next several days. Beachgoers in those areas should follow advice from lifeguards, local authorities, and beach warning flags. Storm surge, flooding, and tropical storm conditions are expected in the North Carolina Outer Banks beginning later today. The storm surge will be accompanied by large breaking waves leading to significant beach erosion and overwash, making some roads impassable. Tropical storm conditions are expected on Thursday along the Virginia coast. Wind gusts to tropical storm force are likely along portions of the remainder of the United States, mid-Atlantic, and southern New England coasts. Thursday through early Friday. And number four, tropical storm conditions are possible on Bermuda on Thursday and Friday. So tomorrow into Friday, we are looking at tropical storm conditions possible there. And a tropical storm watch has been issued. So keep in mind that the chances of tropical storm force winds here do not illustrate really how big this wind field actually is. And we're going to get into that in just a second. And so you can see the chances of tropical storm force winds may be only 5 to 10% uh, percent at this time, but we're expecting those chances to dramatically go up as this gets closer to the coast. So hopefully, if you were told to evacuate in the outer banks of North Carolina, you need to evacuate. This is a life-threatening storm by all means. We're not expecting a whole lot of rain out of this, but we are expecting tropical storm force winds, life-threatening rip currents, large breaking waves that are over 30 feet in some areas. So you need to take this very seriously, even so the center itself is going to remain offshore. We're also talking about tropical storm force winds along the Nova Scotia coast, as well as New Finland and the Labrador of Canada in the next two to three days here, as this really gains acceleration and um, speed over that period of time. And by the latter part of the weekend, it's going to be all the way up over here, perhaps in the North Atlantic. Therefore, the National Hurricane Center again explicitly shows this becoming a major hurricane anytime now uh, with 110 mile an hour winds. But based on the structure that I'm seeing right now we're with concentric eye walls, I would not be surprised if this does not become a major hurricane with, again, peak intensity right now of about 110 miles an hour. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's a 40 60 percent chance that this ends up becoming a major hurricane once again but this has been back and forth really tricky and that is why i'm not going too aggressive with my forecast and keeping this at around 110 miles per hour 
in the next few days or in the next day or two. But after we get past Thursday, as this moves away from the United States, gradual weakening into a very power extra a powerful extra tropical cyclone is then expected now i really want to be very very clear and thorough and honest in my video here with the wind field of aaron even so we see very slight strengthening from here even if it's 110 or 115 miles an hour it's not going to matter exactly how intense aaron actually is because we are talking about a very 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 large wind field some of the largest wind fields from a hurricane that we have seen in uh, several years perhaps and so we can see this from the halves a on just how large this wind field actually is Anything in purple here is hurricane force winds in the lower levels of the atmosphere with uh, dark green colors outlining tropical storm force winds in the lower levels. Why I'm showing this is because even so you do get sustained winds of probably about 40 to 50 miles an hour in the outer banks, you could theoretically barely get hurricane force wind gusts, that is winds gusting to 70 plus miles or 74, 75 miles an hour or greater along the outer banks of North Carolina. So as it stands, this is going to be an extremely dangerous hurricane along the Carolina coast, especially the outer banks, including for Nor Norfolk in Virginia, because just how expansive this wind field actually is. All right. So this is one of those rare occasions that intensity really doesn't matter very much as versus the wind field of Aaron. And actually, if we take a little plot here and show you just how big this wind field actually is, we go to the southeastern quadrant with the tropical storm force wind field in terms of wind gusts extend all the way out to 380 nautical miles out from the center. This is a very large hurricane. And then if we go on to the northwestern side, we're looking at about 260 to 270 nautical miles out from the center. So this is a very, very powerful storm by all means, and this needs to be taken into consideration. Now, by day two, by Thursday night into Friday, that wind field continues to expand and then undergoes barrel clinic extra tropical transition into a barrel clinic low here in the high latitudes of the Atlantic. While the pressure does come up, this is still a very powerful storm for any shipping interest. If you're cruising, if you are a cargo liner, please keep that in mind. We are talking about some very rough seas out here, including some hurricane force winds and wind gusts. Now, speaking of oceanic conditions, we are talking about significant surf and large breaking waves along the Carolina coast, including the Northeast coast, and if not, even along the Florida coast as well. So here's a look at the European significant wave height forecast. And as we can see here, waves are only going to get bigger, especially in the outer banks of North Carolina, where we are expecting up to four feet of storm surge in some areas here. So please keep that in mind. All right, Rodanthe expecting to see up to four feet of storm surge here, combined with very, very large breaking waves on the order of perhaps 20 to 25 feet with some breakers, some of the largest breakers here exceeding possibly 35 or so feet. So please, please avoid the beaches if you can over the next couple of days here as surf is going to be life-threatening with life-threatening rip currents with this um, large hurricane. And then the surf is really going to come up also for the northeast coast of New England, including from New Jersey, Long Island, where we have significant wave heights of about 12 to 16 feet high with some breakers there exceeding maybe 20 to 25 feet high. As this hurricane moves away, the surf is going to back away quite significantly. And so by the weekend or the latter part of the weekend, it should be safe enough to go to the beaches where wave heights here do come down below about four to six feet. So keep that in mind, very, very large breaking waves from Hurricane Aaron is going to be a big, big main concern with the system. But anyways, if you haven't been here before and you absolutely did like today's update on Hurricane Aaron, ready to become a major hurricane with winds that could peak up to 120 miles per hour, according to the National Hurricane Center, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, enable 
all notifications by hitting the bell notification icon to get my daily tropical weather updates here, including my upcoming winter forecast for the YouTube channel, as well as don't forget to also uh, like the video and share this video with their family and friends on social media. I will do my best at keeping you all updated if necessary on Hurricane Aaron as it re-intensifies now, closing in on a Category 3 hurricane here very shortly. And one more thing that I wanted to add here is please go check out Weather Kingdom on YouTube. There's going to be a link in the description below this video, so be sure to check him out, subscribe, share, and like his YouTube channel with others because he does a great job at covering the tropics on a daily basis as well. So be sure to go check out Weather Kingdom today. Link in the description below this video. But otherwise, thank you all for watching this tropical weather forecast. Have a great rest of your afternoon and evening.